Well, so, of course, um, you start, you ended probably with the, you know, the power of the party. Mm -hmm. And I started this morning by saying, look, where we're going as a country, and when Professor Kofi Abuchi was here, one of the things he said was that he's always told his students that parliament is the strongest institution in the constitution on paper, but the weakest institution in reality. And this has just shown all of us that Parliament is actually a very weak institution. And in fact, the ruling by Professor Michael Quay, which dismissed the Fomina MP, Esiama, from Parliament, further weakened Parliament, in the sense that today, if you go to Parliament on the ticket of a political party and you disagree with your party, Mm. Your party can suspend you, can dismiss you. And you lose the seat. And you lose the seat. And so you would probably would want a constitutional amend that will, amendment that will prevent that from happening. So that when MPs go to parliament, they know, for instance, that once they've not crossed carpets and they're sacked by, the, by their parties, they could still be members of parliament. Because the moment we do this, the very institution which is the control of the public purse, and you expect them to be there and check the executive cannot do so. Because we know today that the executive controls the party. Whichever party is in uh, you know, uh, power, uh, you know, will control the party, the government will control the party. Now, you started by talking about the manifest and the latent reason. I mean, it's obvious, for instance, that yes, we are being told this is because you want uh, you know, the whole conversation to be had about the economy. We have actually seen persons within the NDC organizing fora about the budget. And the key speaker is Isaac Adungu. Mm. True or false? We've seen that. We have seen that happening in this country. And so the point about we're going into election 2024, we think it's going to be fought on the economy, so we want a minority leader who's well-versed in the economy. Really? To be very honest with you, if you're bringing somebody to speak to me about the economy, I would take all those things from a flag bearer. I would take those things, if not from a flag bearer, at least from a running mate. One that I can hold accountable. Because if a minority leader makes a promise to me, or is fighting about it, I mean, about uh, is fighting on the economy and all of that, let me tell you something. And I started something here, right here on this program, when I called on all those who want to be president to come out there and tell us their plans for the country, particularly when it comes to domestic debt exchange. Dr. Dufo has shared his with you. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan Kojo Chairman Ting, he's yeah. shared his also. He wasn't on his platform. But I do not mind. The most important thing is that anybody who wants to become president should be telling us what he wants to do so that I hold you accountable. Everything that you say. Absolutely. It is the reason why the government assurances committee, who is ministers, and the president accountable. That's very instructive. Okay? You want to hold ministers I mean, and presidents rest accountable. So I want to hold your, I want the flag bearer to tell me, this is what I want to do. And I say, you're, I mean, this is what you said you are going to do. And this is the reason I voted for you. And that's why I'm taking you on. So if you really, and if you look at it from that point of view, that, oh, you need, you know, uh, one that can take on the government when it comes to the economy. He'll be punching holes. He can punch holes. But the real meat must come from the one who wants to leave the country. It is only when you have told us what you want to do as a political party, okay, that we now would have others repeating same, and then we say we go with it. Could that not have been done, for instance, by, how do you put it, um, you know, uh, for instance, could that have been done by Atoforsen Steele, as a ranking member of the finance committee, he could have done that. You could have actually said, okay, because we want to do that, how about James Savage, who's made it very clear he's not getting back to parliament, so why don't you become deputy minority leader at Tufosin? You could actually make that point all the same. But having said that also, because of the decisions the NPP took in 2015, and eventually they won the election with such a convincing margin, Mm. You cannot just write this off and say the NDC is goofed. This could be the masterstroke. We may never know. 